Hello, Joel here with another edition of Engineering Roundtable. Today we're going to be talking about automated terrariums. I've been interested in terrariums for several years now. This all began way back when I got a tarantula from my aunt. Being an engineer and a scientist at heart, I wanted the tarantula to live more than just a life in a box. I wanted its time as a captive critter to have purpose, and therefore I set out to set up a terrarium that would allow me to observe it without interfering with its daily routine. And also the tarantula was mostly nocturnal, so observing it required staying up at night. So I purchased a small camera that we sell at SparkFun that has infrared lights on it, which would allow me to observe it during the nighttime with infrared light. So when I first purchased the CMOS camera, I wanted to hook it up to a computer. However, the CMOS has RCA coming off of it and most computers don't have an RCA connector. I discovered that there's a little device called the EasyCap that is sold for about $15 online and it allows you to connect RCA to USB. I then needed a very long cable to reach all the way from my terrarium to my room so that I could observe in my room without disturbing the tarantula while he was in the dark. Thus, I created a 75 foot cable with RCA connectors on both ends. I was a little hesitant that it would affect the video quality, but it worked just fine even traveling over that far of a distance. This worked great for a while, but shortly after I wanted to create more of a mobile setup for the camera. I'd seen many pan tilt setups with cameras and decided that's what I wanted to do. I used two servos and glued them in a fashion so that they can have both tilt and pan. Then I hooked that all up to an Arduino Pro Micro and also to a Bluetooth module so that I could connect to it via Bluetooth from my computer in my room and have controls via the keyboard to move the camera in whichever direction I desired. I also wanted to be able to read the temperature and potentially humidity from the terrarium. So I also added a little temperature humidity sensor module to the camera, which would also be accessible via Bluetooth and the keyboard. So as we can see on my screen here, we have the camera set up. I'm using a piece of software called EasyCap, and we have a terminal open, which has the printout that comes from the Arduino. This is to just help me remember what controls I set to move the camera about. I'm using Z-Term. You could also use CoolTerm, or if you're on Windows, you could use TerraTerm or HyperTerminal. There is options for moving the camera one degree each way. Here we have options for moving it five degrees each way. And here we have some numbers set up to allow presets. So if I wanted to say move to the left very quickly, I could hit four, boom, camera moves to the left. Say I want to go to the right, we'll just hit six, and down, up, and back to the middle. As you can see, it's a little wobbly. That's mostly because of the table it's on now. Here we can use the traditional ASWD controls for moving the camera one degree, which was the most preferred method so that when I did move the camera, it didn't startle the tarantula and then we can see what it's like when it moves five degrees. I also had a few other options such as displaying the current degrees of both servos. An R resets it. And last, if you type T, it gives you the current temperature and humidity of the sensor that was hooked up to the camera. It is no longer hooked up and has been harvested for later projects, but as you can see, it still wants to print out the temperature and humidity. So with that, my setup was working great and I got lots of great footage of this tarantula. And then one day I came home and sadly the tarantula had passed away. I had this awesome terrarium with a good camera rig that I'd built and I didn't want it to go to waste. So I started thinking about getting another tarantula to, to fill his place. However, my roommate convinced me that a scorpion would be a lot cooler. Thus, I went to the local exotic pet shop in Boulder and purchased myself a scorpion. Scorpions, particularly emperor scorpions, which was the species of scorpion that I had purchased, like their climate to be very hot and humid as they come from the tropical parts of Africa. I also learned that scorpions love to burrow and can burrow up to several feet in the ground. Here you can see some egg crate light diffraction material that you can pick up at your local hardware store. I used this covered with some some breathable plastic, much that you would put underneath rocks in your yard to create this false bottom. This allows 
water to live underneath the false bottom with rocks and dirt be being above it. And this also created a little pool for the scorpion to drink from. This allowed the terrarium to have a lot more humidity within it. And it also gave the scorpion a place to make his burrow. So once I had created the terrarium with the false bottom, I placed the camera inside and began observing. Unfortunately, my camera setup was only local to the computer in my house, and I wanted to be able to view the feed from anywhere in the world. So with a little more research, I soon discovered that there are IP cameras available for pretty cheap online. I purchased this one from eBay for about $80, and it had all of the functionality that I was looking for. It had built-in Wi-Fi so that I could hook it up to my home network and then access it from anywhere in the world. It still had pan tilt so that I could have full 360 view of the terrarium, and it also had infrared LEDs for observing the scorpion at night. Unfortunately, this made my old rig sort of obsolete, but I was still proud of it, and I wanted to incorporate more DIY electronics into my terrarium. So here we are next to the latest iteration of the automated terrarium. We have a main control box over here that has an Arduino and an LCD screen to display the temperature and the humidity. It then has the temperature and humidity sensor that I harvested from the previous setup. It continuously reads the temperature hum and humidity in the tank, and if either drop below a certain level, it controls the humidifier I have set up below here, and it controls the temperature by regulating the heat lamp above. It regulates these two objects via a outlet box that I have rigged with the SparkFun relay controller board and that is how the Arduino says either turn these devices on or off. With that I set out to create a sort of waterfall feature for the terrarium. In a, a smaller version of this I used this terrarium pump to basically create a tube that went to the other side of the tank and act as a waterfall and also to circulate the water so it would not get stagnant. There's a similar pump in this tank that flows all the way from that corner over here into the pool. And in conjunction with that, the humidifier creates a nice misty, humid atmosphere for within the tank. Inside the control box, we have a custom made PCB that I made utilizing the batch PCB service. We have a connection to the LCD screen, which is surrounded by Sugru. We then have the Atmega328 running the show. We have the main on switch and also an override switch that turns on the waterfall and the fogger whether or not the humidity and temperature are at any sort of desired level. Last, we have an RGB LED to act as an indicator light for when both the heater and the waterfall are on. I soon realized that the top of the tank with its meshed netting allowed the humidity to escape rather quickly in the dry, arid air. So I used the laser cutter at SparkFun to cut out some acrylic to place on top of the mesh screen. I originally cut some air holes all about and then replaced some of the holes that were cut out to adjust the amount of humidity that was captured. There's also an interesting fact that many people don't know about scorpions, and that is that they glow green under UV light. I had this flashlight laying around and decided to hack it with some UV LEDs that we also sell at SparkFun so that I could use it to observe the scorpion in the nighttime. The result is a very awesome glowing green effect. In previous terrarium setups, I lined the top with the same UV LEDs which created a nice black light ambiance and made observing them in the dark also fun and easy. Thanks for watching another episode of Engineering Roundtable. I hope you enjoyed my automated terrarium and I hope it inspires you to go out and create automated habitats for your critters. So we'll see you again in two weeks with another episode of Engineering Roundtable.